Hello everybody, this is Rob and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm very excited to present the latest upgrade for Logic Pro 10. This is version 10.4 that I will be going through today. And uh, for the longest time I put off upgrading to the newest version of Logic because my operating system, I've got a older Mac that I've flashed the firmware and upgraded to uh, so that it looks like a newer Mac and it's got 12 cores and yada, yada, yada. Anyways, I, uh, there were some issues that I had concerned me about upgrading. So I was just putting it off, but now with this new upgrade, I couldn't put it off any longer because it's so great. And, uh, so I upgraded my operating system and here's logic 10.4 and I'm really excited. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going through, I put together a, demo track here and uh, I'm just going to go through some of my favorite new features in Logic 10.4 so let me give it a quick play for you then we'll dig in Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is the tempo match. You'll notice I've got a kick and I've got some uh, loops that I've dragged in here and they're a varying tempo. You've got this one here at 128, which is the project tempo. You've got this one here at 125, so it's been sped up. Same here, 125, then another 128. Uh, so I'm going to show you real quick how easy that is. Uh, I've got a, a hat here that's from the sound line, sound, uh, sound library that I have from Splice. And all you do is you just drag it in. It analyzes it and everything is tempo matched. So let's play it now. What? So it added the uh, much needed uh, open hat, but, but, but if you listen to it in isolation and it's the file is even a little bit on the wet side. There's a little bit of reverb in it, but the algorithm has done a fantastic job of converting this. Okay, so that's the uh, tempo match feature, and you're... Uh, you basically tell it what to do up here and you want to have it on keep. And then you have the uh, settings right here. You go in and do the settings. This is what you're looking for right here. So you, and you just go like that. So the next item is the vintage EQs that they've offered. And it's really amazing. This one right here, this is the, they give you three new ones. You've got, go to here to EQ, vintage EQs, and they give you the console EQ, which is the uh, Neve, the graphic EQ, which is going to be the, I believe the API, don't remember the number. And then this one here, the tube, which is this one here, is going to be the uh, Pultec. So what I've done is I've come in here and I've uh, given a little boost at 6K. This is your cue, your bandwidth, and then you can actually attenuate, which kind of changes the shape of the, uh, the filter shape of the EQ, uh, the profile. So let's uh, do a before and after here. Here's width. They're just a really classy sounding EQ. It's very subtle, 
but it adds warmth and sizzle. That's the way I would use to describe it, what I, the words I would use. And this one here, I've got the tube EQ on it also. Let's have a listen to that before and after. Adds a little bit of sizzle. Now, let me play with it here. So you can turn these things way up and it, they're just class and they've done a really good job because I have other versions of the Poltec. Uh, and another nice feature is that you can undo, you know, if you've gone in here and screwed around with your settings and you want to go back to where you were, just press undo. There you go. Another thing that I like is that your frequency uh, increments on the uh, regular Poltec, they're usually stepped, so you can step through them like this. But on the Logic, now with Logic, they're infinite. You can sweep through the different settings on your EQ on the Poltec, which is really nice because not all the sounds are the same and some of them have uh, different tonalities and you can really zero in on them. So I think that's really good. And this one here, I use, use the same one again and the same one here. Let's see, where did I use that? Uh, yeah, I love the Poltec on hats and percussion. It's just, just really great. So let's add it to this here. Okay, let's go to, oh, where are we at here? Tube. Let's add a little at 5K. That ought to do her. Maybe a little bit too bright here. Let's see here. Yeah, a little bit too bright. It's very subtle, but it's very high class. It's, I mean, they've done an amazing job. Okay, and then so I've got this pluck sound. Let's move on to this pluck sound. I use the uh, new chroma verb. But first, I, let me show you the API. Here's the API, uh, the vintage graphic EQ, they call it. And I basically sculpted the sound a little bit. Let's hear that in isolation. Just very high class sounding. I mean, it, they, they've really done a, in, to my ears, they've done an amazing job. So I don't believe I use the console, but I think maybe I used it down here. No, I don't know if I've used the console EQ, which is the Neve. Let me show it to you real quick here. EQ. And this one, as you know, any of you have used the Neve, they're really powerful. So. They're really quite powerful, but I didn't use it in this project yet. <laughs> Let's go to no plug in here. Okay. So, and then I use the new chroma verb. Now, for some reason, now, if you uh, if you look at other walkthrough videos of 10.4, they've got a nice uh, spectral analyzer that comes up that's really wild, but for some reason, it's not coming up on mine. I don't know why, but... Uh, It's really a great sounding reverb. Did I just call it an EQ a couple seconds ago? Wow. <laughs> Anyhow, let me turn it off here. And so you've got uh, main and details. Details allow you to filter the output. And then the main dampens the reverb itself. Then down here you have pre-delay that you can set to uh, notes, which is, I haven't really played around with that much, but could really be great in a lot of EDM types of effects. But I've got it at milliseconds here, wet and dry, D 
decay time. It goes up to 100 seconds, which is really wild. I've played around with that. Just keeps on going. So, yeah, but normally you'd have a, a bunch of colored little spectral uh, analyzer would be jumping around, but I don't know why mine's not doing it. Could be the uh, video, video card I have, but I'm not really quite sure. So, okay. And then, uh, I, I don't know if this is a 10.4 or 10.3 version of Logic, but you have the ability to go in here and use stereo panning. You go in here and you can go to stereo pan, or you could let's click it back to normal. Well, let's see here. Yeah, we're still on stereo pan. And you basically adjust you know, where you're at here, how wide you want the stereo. And then it basically what it does is put the directional mixer right on your pan pot so you can adjust the width of your stereo field and then shift that stereo field where it aims. And I've got a couple of the loops pan left and right. So yeah, uh, then I've got one more thing. I've got this little pluck sound here. And what I did is I've got the new step effects. Step effects has a lot of presets and what it does, it, it will allow you to add modulation to certain effects based on a step, step modulator. And here's what, and I just used a preset endless roll. There were other presets. You've just got a ton in here. You can play around with, haven't really had time to learn this yet, but look, here it is without. Here it is with. Then I got the chroma verb on here got a different preset the presets for the uh for the type of uh space you want they've got a bunch of different uh spaces and they have a bunch of different uh presets as well and this one came under synth reverbs but they've got a ton of presets they've also uh done a redo of the uh interface on space designer which is uh really makes it easy to use. Let me show you that real quick. Space Designer is now, uh, you've got just a, it's a lot easier to use. The old one was kind of clunky and small and you can set the pre-delay here. I haven't really dug into this one yet, but it's been completely redesigned. All the functionality is still there from the old one. All the impulse responses and all the, everything is still here as far as I can tell, but it's uh, made it a lot more user-friendly. So anyways, that's it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough and I uh, hope you're excited about the new Logic 10.4 as I am. And, uh, I uh, am doing that, uh, building a uh, 138 trance uh, series, and I got up to session number two, but I had a problem with a uh, corrupted file on that trance song that I was, that trance track that I was putting together. But I figured it out, was able to revert to an old file. I had a problem with silence. Silence kept, the attack envelope kept opening up and making the sound inaudible and I even emailed Leonard and he told me to look for some uh, controller change data. Couldn't find any because I had never even opened up any automation or any reading or writing of any type of uh, automated data. So I, I, I've had that problem in the past with a corrupted file. So I'm going to be digging into that and get in. Uh, so be on the lookout for uh, part three of that uh, series of videos. So anyways, uh, 
thanks for uh, watching. And if you enjoyed this, hit that like button and or subscribe button, whichever you prefer. That would be greatly appreciated. And thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.